Hi there, this is Chris from PC Gamer, and I am joined by Tom Francis of PC Gamer as well. Hello. For now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. um, Tom, what, what video game are we looking at on the screen? We're looking at a game called Gunpoint, um, which I know a little something about. Um, and why would you know anything about this because video game? Because I made much of it. <laughs> much of it? Uh, exactly the, how much of it did you make? <laughs> the uh, design, writing, and coding. <laughs> Sorry, I was just shot. Um, <laughs> I'm going to restart the mission. Yeah. As a full stop to my sentence. Yeah, indeed. Punctuate everything you say with um, <laughs> me failing at the game you spend three years of your life making. <laughs> yeah, three years of my spare time. Yeah, and you, you've been on sabbatical for a little while, uh, finishing it off, but it came out this week. Um, yep, or, Monday. Yeah, uh, presuming this video comes out this week. Yeah. The week we're talking in. June the 3rd. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, it's almost been a hell of a week for you. Yeah, it's been quite exciting. I've been I can watching, imagine. have um, been sales graphs obsessively and... Um, I mean, actually, I haven't really uh, since it launched. So I had a pre-order week where the demo was out, yeah. and uh, that gave me a chance to kind of, um, you know, send it out to the press and uh, do all the things you do just before launch. But also have people playing it and telling me about bugs and things. Yeah. But now that it's launched, it's um, the amount of people playing it. I, like it did really well at pre-order. We made, um, we sold loads of copies, and uh, it did sort of well, basically an amount that was brilliant, um, depending on how. Uh, long that would keep up for and how much it would fall off and that kind of stuff and then <laughs> when it actually released I was kind of thinking you know will it stay steady will it go up a little bit or will it drop off <laughs> and it just sort of skyrocketed like the graph is just a brick wall at that point yeah when it comes out it just suddenly um, a lot of reviews went live at that point lots of youtubers covered it at that point and uh, just loads and loads of people will not pre-order something so there are loads of people who are interested in it but hadn't which is probably it at that time. right to be honest no yeah, offense. <laughs> I, yeah I agree with that and that's why I put a demo out before yeah, yeah. so that people can actually try it and um, decide for themselves and there was no pre-order exclusives the it was on sale but it was it was on sale for launch week as well so there's mm. no incentive to pre-order um, and so yeah it's done much much better than I thought it would <laughs> <laughs> well okay so um so that people watching this video know what, what it actually is and what I'm doing currently. <laughs> Explain you are Gunpoint. the brown guy. Yeah, I am brown guy and I am in where and doing what. You're a freelance spy and you're hired by your clients to break into buildings um, to steal data usually. Or in mm -hmm. this case you're stealing a prototype of a weapon system. This thing up and, here? Yeah. So uh, you have to get past guards and security devices. Oh, I didn't mean to do that, but okay. Yes, and go on. <laughs> the main Continue. way you do it is to use a device called the Crosslink to see how the whole building is wired up, and uh, you can drag all the connections around to where oh, no. you want. Oh no, Tom, it's gone wrong. <laughs> or you can just <laughs> climb on a ceiling until someone shoots you. Yeah, indeed. Um, so it's meant to be um, a bit of a puzzle game in that you're trying to figure out, okay, what do I need to connect to where, and how can I get access to that circuit, and how can I get mm. access to this circuit. But then also... Um, have a lot of <laughs> <laughs> smooth <laughs> interesting moves um, yeah but also have a bit of a creative aspect to it and you know you can think of solutions i haven't thought of and you can also make up rules for yourself and decide you get ratings at the end of each mission for uh, witnesses yep. and as we've seen noise and violence time um and Let's try that again. you don't need you don't get any extra money for optimizing those and the game mm. never tells you which one is um is the right way to do it, but your clients will sometimes request you to use no violence or something. Yeah. Um, and personally, I find the most fun way to play is to just try and avoid violence all the time, even if that's not your objective. Um, yeah, me too, definitely. I mean, you've mentioned before, like, I mean, I should stress below, we've been talking about this game since you were working on it kind of in your spare time two years ago. Yep. And, like, you know, you. you would, I think you would still rate Deus Ex as your favorite game of all time. And, like, yep. there's, there's, there is that of, there is that to it as well. Um, what what did you think was like the, the, the core of those games that are obviously like first person immersive sims in almost every case that you could capture in 2D with Little Brown Guy? <laughs> well, my plan for Little Brown Guy was to. <laughs> uh, his name is Conway. Yeah. <laughs> um, was basically, a, I was trying to obviously. Um, Sorry, I keep doing Being that a games journalist and having a particular favourite game that. Uh, has been my favorite for a very long time. Mm. Uh, you have to write about it a lot. Like every top 100, I end up writing about Deus Ex in some capacity. Yeah. Um, and so you have to keep on analyzing. Like, why do I like this? What is actually good about it? And then games like Bioshock come out, and you know, I love Bioshock, but it wasn't as good as Deus Ex. And I'm thinking, what is the difference between these two things? And um, uh, trying to distill down what I really like about Deus Ex. Yeah. And it, the best kind of answer I come up with was that it's to do with subverting your environment and yeah. having ways to do that that are beyond um, what the level designer intended and that just use very consistent systems oh. <laughs> that guy looks silly walking backwards um, to uh, 
uh, give you just loads and loads of options and uh, loads of ways to be clever that um, mm. that go beyond the normal. Uh, I'm finding like. ways to be dumb that go beyond <laughs> the normal. Um, yeah, sorry, I didn't think of that. This is actually the mission I... Um, there's an achievement in the game for doing a mission faster than your part-time that you set when you were developing it. Yeah. Uh, and this is the only one I've uh, managed to do that on. Um, or it's at least. called I Am Better Than Tom Francis. Yeah. <laughs> in order to... Uh, um, which is, you know, satisfying when you know Tom Francis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually satisfying for people who don't know Tom Francis, but it's especially satisfying if you do. That's a kind of bonus feature. A few people have emailed me just to tell me they got that achievement. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, tweeted it earlier. I mean, I can't, I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to pass up the prices opportunity <laughs> to prove a point that you laid in front of me. Um, My artist, uh, John Roberts, um, drew a little sprite of me looking really sad and holding up a white flag <laughs> for this purpose, which is brilliant. I might be able to show, actually, if I can go over the overlay. Uh, there it oh is. yeah, Ooh, there it is. Close that. There it is. Sad. Poor sad, sad Tom Francis. Francis. <laughs> Poor sad Tom Francis. Oh, I've so always made a gunpoint achievement guy already. Oh wow! <laughs> so it's gaming awesome. your game. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so that is the work of John Roberts. He's our character and uh, yeah. environment artist. So he did all the level art you see here and all the characters. And then the background, the city backdrop, is by Fabian Van Domelen. Yeah, the art's um, beautiful. I mean, you, you sourced it in kind of an interesting way as well because you what, put out a call for people to submit yeah. art to you. This is. Um, Something that's coming up in reviews uh, is people start calling it things like cohesive. And I'm like, what, really? <laughs> and I think, oh, what they probably mean is the art suits the game and the music mm. suits the game. And that's because um, in both cases, I released a trailer and said, hey, I need an artist, or hey, I need a composition. Oh. Um, and I made asked people to make a sample piece. So for yeah. the art, it was like sprite or you know, a bit of environment art. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see if I can do this in a really dumb way. <laughs> and uh, so then I just had loads of samples to pick from. Um, and yeah, we got an amazing response both times. We've got like 34 artists applying the first time. And that was when it was going to be a free game, so it wasn't even offering any money. It was going to be like, I'm not going to make any money, you're not going to make any money. It would just be a free project for us both. Um, and still, those people wanted to work on it, which was awesome. Yeah, yeah. And it meant I got to pick not only like brilliant artists, because we've got loads of brilliant artists applying, but then I got to pick like, who is of these brilliant artists, which one already meshes perfectly That's with, with um, the style I have in mind for the game. Can you knock him off with the. No, he's not facing me. Actually, you know what I could do? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> the elevator. Yeah. Where he turns around and have the gun out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of little interactions like this. Oh, no, oh, no. I accidentally looked away. <laughs> yeah, if you're holding someone at gunpoint, name of the game, don't... <laughs> don't point your gun away from uh, yeah, them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's that's, that's where your gun is pointing. Oh, no, <laughs> that was earlier. Where your gun is pointing is Sorry, important to be gunpoint. And then... Boo. I'm delighted that it's being as relevant as it is. <laughs> yeah, indeed. There's actually an, also an achievement called Finally the Name is Relevant for using a gun. Yeah. Because <laughs> some people probably never will. Little gun. Yay! <laughs> Hooray! Uh, it's just the silent killer. It's, um, that's how you defeat the boss of Prince of Persia 1. The 2D <laughs> one. You have to. There's a guy who always blocks your attacks, but he moves mm. backwards a little bit each time he blocks, so you just have to figure out that if he keeps on having to do this, eventually he'll fall off the edge of the level. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, uh, presumably not a conscious tribute there that you've set up. On um, I don't know actually. Maybe it was because that wasn't in the original idea for you know what would happen when you had someone at gunpoint. They're supposed to just mm. freeze. But then I thought if you get really close, you should back off. Yeah. Yeah. It would be nice if they backed off. Open that door. Different possibilities. Open that door. <laughs> There's. Um, and so uh, we've got music on this, right? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. So we can't hear the sound for recording this video, but uh, no, the music's beautiful as well. That's what. Uh, two or three. Uh, three different people. Again, it was an open audition type thing where mm. it just asked for like a sample piece, and um, with the intention of picking one composer, then score the whole game. But unfortunately, <laughs> one guy uh, did the perfect mission music, one guy did the perfect shot music, and then one guy did the perfect like main theme. Mm. Um, and so the main theme is by John Robert Matz, and it's this beautiful like lonely, sad sax thing. Um, and the shot music is by Francisco Cerda, who did the music for uh, Jamestown. Yeah. And uh, that's like really relaxed, like cool, smooth lounge jazz, <laughs> which is <laughs> exactly what I wanted for that. And I didn't tell anyone that, but uh, he just happened to do that. And um, so for those two, I just said, like, your sample piece is perfect. Can I just use it and give you, like, a, a you know, small percentage of our profits? And uh, they're both up for that. And then the guy who did the perfect mission music, um, Brian Ike, uh, I said, let's... You know, happy to do all the mission music and um, <laughs> <laughs> holy shit! And yeah, that worked out really well. But that's been a, you know an ongoing process of uh, uh, back and forth where we figure out different styles and um, 
the exclusive edition of the game comes with a lot of stuff we didn't use because it was um, really good, but didn't. It was too busy or hectic for the game mm. because if you, when you're sneaking up on an enemy, it turns out it's really distracting if the music is doing something really busy and you're not. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's the RTS music problem, you know, where RTSs have these big booming orchestral soundtracks, but then when you're just directing a miner to mine some crystals, <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah, a little bit off-putting. So, um, looking at the store, I guess, which, where you can kind of... I mean, it's, it's partly a store, but also you, there's no... Um, playing through the game once gets you pretty much everything. Is that right? Or at least in the ability to swap in and out? Yeah. Is it actually possible to get every upgrade? Because you can, as you see, like return an upgrade so you can buy others for the same price with no loss. Um, yeah, I think if you don't buy any batteries, you can probably get everything on one playthrough. Okay. Um, and with the upgrades, I think you probably... Uh, can get almost all of them because that's pretty fixed. It's just you get one upgrade point per mission, mm. and it was intentional that. Um, well, there's loads of weird choices in this, right? <laughs> yeah. Most games don't let you return a gadget for full price. You know, it always pisses me off in uh, RPGs where you buy something and then you want to sell it back to the guy and he'll give you like 25% of the price. <laughs> really? Do we need like in a single player RPG? Do we need a money sink? Do you have to leech the economy? Um, so uh, there was no particular reason to to make it cost you money, and also it would. Um, there's an obvious problem, which is that if a mission... Originally, every gadget would be required for a certain mission, so you'd have to buy like the long shot in order to do this certain mission. Yeah. And that meant that if you spent your money on the wrong gadget at the wrong time, you would be unable to afford the one you needed to progress, and you'd be totally screwed. Mm. So um, I just let you return it all for full price and just... I was going to have a sort of series of emails from the, the technology company who make these gadgets, um, just reacting to how incredibly unreasonable you are <laughs> and like you try this gadget out you use it and then you eventually decide you don't want it and then you return it for full price um, and they were going to be really snarky about that but uh, no time for that I'm not going to play gunpoint wrong Tom <laughs> <laughs> use the gun <laughs> oh no it's the one thing you're not supposed to do this is something I'm still not totally happy with is um, uh, the penalty for using a gun is that the police arrive in like 30 seconds or so mm -hmm. um, yeah I'm screwed and often, you know, if you use it in the first enemy, like Chris just did, uh, you are screwed and that's uh, bad for you and so you learn not to use the gun. But there's two things wrong with it. One is that once the police do arrive, it doesn't say game over or anything, it just, you're in a bad situation and you will find that you, it's almost impossible to get out of this. I've heard of people getting out of it, but it's pretty much impossible. Okay. And I wanted you to get that, I wanted you to think, oh, I'm fucked now, I need to restart the mission. But lots of people don't, <laughs> lots of people really believe in themselves and they're like, I can do this, there's got to be a way around this guy. Like, The game hasn't ended, so there must, it must be possible. And yeah. In fact, the only reason the game hasn't ended is because I hate game over screens when you're not dead. Right. You know, in Spender Cell, you set off three alarms mm -hmm. and it says, game over. I'm like, what? But I'm still alive. So this guy, this police sniper has now showed up. Yeah, and he um. kills you instantly anytime you can see you, so it's difficult to get to the exit. <laughs> you should be able to, yeah, as you move your cursor around, you see it turns red and most of the level now <laughs> okay because those are the bits you can right. see but i think some people have done it where like they'll send an elevator to a different floor and when the elevator arrives it opens the door so that they can have their gun ready when the door opens so that the the very frame that they get line of sight they can shoot the guy okay and in theory i would have thought they were both die it... but in practice they've done it where they actually kill and it's possible to kill that guy hang on i'm just gonna <laughs> yeah that's a it's better idea than, that's a better idea than my idea but then the other issue is that um, so the penalty for shooting a gun is that you then have a limited time to complete the mission mm. but also the advantage of shooting a gun is it lets you solve missions very quickly <laughs> and I've so only got one bullet so this is, <laughs> this is going to take <laughs> yeah hmm. it's going to be difficult to get rid of that guy <laughs> hmm I'm just going back in this lift bye because <laughs> <laughs> you can't pounce those guys uh, with Kate, okay I need to yeah no I can't can I is there a socket there there is, I but there it's is. on a circuit that I can't access because I need to get to that which he's facing. Can't you point your gun at him and then back off and use the circuit while you've got the gun pointed at him? Yeah, good, good job, gunpoint creative. <laughs> Thank God you're here. Oh no! <laughs> oh, oh shit! Mate. Yeah, and doesn't... the auto saves go before I fired the gun. So oh yeah. no! <laughs> so the auto save stops once you fired a shot because it's possible to totally screw yourself, as Chris uh, may have. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm too stubborn for this. <laughs> Right, uh, luckily I can ignore this sort of clever puzzle involving lifts and motion and sound detectors <laughs> to open these doors by kicking. <laughs> you wouldn't normally have that gadget at this point in the game, but once you can beat it, you can go back and play early missions with <laughs> the gadgets have unlocked. Yeah, you actually have the you know the power to like go back in sort of new game bad at this mode. <laughs> 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 oh, that's one solution. Yeah. Aren't you out of bullets now though? No. Right. I think I've only fired one. Hang on, how many bullets do I have? One left, yeah. Alright. 
Yeah, so that's another advantage of the system where you can return gadgets, um, because it means that... Oh, it's not shooting. Yes! Ah, that seems almost like a bug. <laughs> no, it's not. It's me beating your game faster than you can. <laughs> With a full psychopath rating. Yeah. Well done. Psychopath Ghost Lightning. <laughs> I think I might actually change my Steam name to that. <laughs> Only a C rating for Psychopath Ghost Lightning, though. Um, something I was going to say earlier, but didn't, uh, was... So I'm actually skipping these dialogues so that people can actually read them through themselves, because yeah. unlike the game, you can't... You can, it's possible to spoil dialogue, where it really isn't actually so much with the missions. Uh, at least most of them. I reckon. Um, you give people like, it seems like there's always almost three options. Um, go, going with the story, going with the story in a, in a sarcastic way, and outwardly calling out bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's usually, um, I forgot what it's called, what's the voice for the, uh, sorry, the word for the character who's like the voice of the audience? Oh. Um, it's like a narrative advice, it, oh, Hurley cool. from Lost is, is an yeah. example of it, um, where he's often saying what the viewer is thinking about the plot, like, hang on, isn't this stupid? Or <laughs> Um, and so there's usually an option for that, like, uh, to be a bit self-aware and to sometimes... I'm not sure how many times there are that you can really break the fourth wall, but to, mm. just to be a bit more um, canny about what you're saying. Um, and, yeah, to not play ball with the plot and take issue with things people are trying to get you to believe. Um, <laughs> but I'm actually having a great deal of fun breaking, <laughs> breaking this. They're quite satisfying, aren't they? Yeah. I don't really... Um, I'm not sure if I've even tested all the levels with the gate crashes. <laughs> <laughs> Valiant effort. Yeah, fair enough. That guy's got my number. Oh, wait, no, 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 you don't, no, you don't, no, you don't, no, you don't. We've got to be careful. Oh, I was <laughs> not you careful get too enough. Close, they think they, okay. they, they panic and cheat you. All right, let's see if I can do this before the police arrive. I, I wasn't sure actually whether. Um, so the reason that he's not. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, it was me clicking to fire and then, but trying to like click, then to jump up to the camera to try and build smooth. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like shoot him and immediately leave. I need yeah. to grab this, this camera here. Um. But what actually? <laughs> but what actually happened was not that at all. No. Oh, all that. Oh wow! <laughs> I think I like to think he would have turned around if he'd left him. <laughs> that was. They're supposed to be like once they've seen you. Oh, one hundred percent intentional. One hundred percent, absolutely intentional. I've, I've, uh, incidentally, you can leave levels not by leaping into the distance, which is what I've taken to do. <laughs> It used to be that um, you would stop at the edge of the screen and then kind of fall down and then go into the subway, yeah. uh, which made no physical sense. And I thought that would be alright, because you know, <laughs> who cares really, like you have to go to the subway eventually and I don't want you to lose yourself. Um, but it was really annoying, I was surprised how frustrating it was that you didn't go off the edge of the screen. <laughs> so I decided, ah, oh, if you left the level, you'll probably find your way back home somehow. <laughs> yeah. There's a little bit of a simpler level. Actually, um, this one kind of introduces these uh, trapdoors. Yeah. Um, which I'm trying to do something a bit more creative with than I have been with all gun approach to gunpoint. <laughs> I mean, it's presumably the name, you get this a lot, I know, but presumably the name gunpoint came about uh, a time when the gun was a more involved <laughs> part of what you do in gunpoint. Yeah, I left it in there so you can still use it, but yeah. you don't have to. Have, well, uh, no, it's true, you don't have to. Um, there's a mission that requires it because it's very difficult without it, but you don't actually have to use it. Um, but yeah, originally, I, th I mean, the gunpoint mechanic worked out the way I thought it would, which is mm. it's tense and it's kind of leads to these standoffs, and sometimes you can, you know, trick people using it. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't walk backwards very well, does he? <laughs> <laughs> He's meant to have a little walking backwards animation. Can I push him out of the window? <laughs> Not if the window isn't broken. You have to push him really hard. <laughs> okay. Excuse me, sir. Could you just <laughs> like knock behind you a little yeah, bit? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> could you lean back with enough force to go through this glass window? All right. This is going to be. Come on. <laughs> but yeah, what, what I found was it wasn't really. It didn't lead to any particularly cool puzzles. Yes. Oh, nice work. <laughs> <laughs> the, the surprise ending. Yeah, exactly. The I was flying, not shoot you. Yeah. Uh, the flying headbutt. <laughs> yeah, Nothing like it. it. When you do have them at gunpoint, like usually they have the gun cocked, and I think he did. Um, mm. Yes, he did. So yeah. his reactions are pretty quick, so it's quite hard to do that. But nice. you've got obviously all the jumping upgrades, so you've got instant jump and mm. much stronger jump strength. Um, and there are, like, once you get past a certain level of strength with your jumping, then it opens up new solutions because you can jump through windows on the third floor. Yeah, yeah. And stuff like that. Usually that would be a hard obstacle. Yeah, yeah. Admittedly, I'm doing a lot of this with upgrades. Yeah, so I never end up using the gunpoint thing in puzzles too much because obviously anything that requires you to hold on a gunpoint, mm. um, uh, you might just kill the dude, or, you know, if you need to push someone somewhere to, to open a door or something, then. Um, that's a problem if you end up killing the guy. <laughs> <laughs> that was very cool. Yeah. <laughs> Ghost. 
So yeah, it no was witnesses. <laughs> but a ghost presumably threw that guy backwards out of a window. Well, it's if no one is left alive to bear mm. witness to what you did, then you get ghost reading. Yeah. I did wonder if it was like some people would want to have a rating for if you were never seen, um, but also didn't kill anyone. Right. Like sort of not just no living witnesses, but no no one ever saw you because that's kind of a point of pride. But actually, if you get zero violence and zero witnesses, then that means you did that. Yeah, let's go back to not playing this like me again and uh, <laughs> return a bunch of things. So um, I like that um, you don't actually have the ability to not land on your face until you <laughs> buy it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's, uh, yeah. Well, like, you're already immune to fall damage, so you, mm. you're kind of already super powered in some respect. But then to do it elegantly, I think you should have to earn that. <laughs> that doesn't come for free. Right, so I pick up everything except the the gate crashes. Why are the gate crashes so much more expensive than everything else? Because I couldn't let you buy them before the last mission. Right. Because they make some, everything so easy. So the mission before last is you get paid an absurd amount of money, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even otherwise. Um, and okay. yeah, so it's it's a gating mechanism <laughs> with a device called the gate crashes. <laughs> Let's go to something else. But yeah, originally the gadgets were going to be all gating mechanisms so each one would you'd need to buy that in order to get this yeah. certain set of missions and that was back when it was going to be you're going to be working for like loads of different clients and each plot would be its own self-contained mm. thing and they wouldn't tie together um, and in the end like it was hard enough to think up one plot that was a compelling reason to break into a bunch of different buildings so it made sense to keep them all connected no. particularly because it's not a hugely long game um, <laughs> that wasn't quite as smooth as I was hoping it would be <laughs> like imagine if this was divided up to eight plots it would be each yeah. one would be fairly fucking short <laughs> yeah quite So yeah, I decided in the end that it was better to have gadgets be more of a personal style thing, so none of them after the cross link mm. were really required until the very end. And uh, it's up to you which one you want to get. Yeah. But it does, I do find people don't really, people just forget <laughs> about them. <laughs> <laughs> Hitting people with doors, was that, I might be misremembering a conversation we had once, was that, was that an accident initially? Or was that, um, um, like... It was, uh, it didn't happen accidentally, but I hadn't thought about it until I got the crossing in there and then the door yeah. opened in someone's face and it didn't knock them out. And I'm like, that should knock them out. <laughs> <laughs> it would be good if that knocked them out. As doors are frequently do in real life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, you have to imagine realistic. that the security doors are on some kind of like really fast hydraulic oh. piston. Yeah. But, you know, when they you know, when they get the signal to open, they don't just swing open, they fucking slam open. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, damn it. <laughs> I didn't rewind the lights which faster. <laughs> well, <that> was <laughs> I almost actually got wiped out by that door then. Um, okay, this is not. In fact, this mission, um, that first building um, on the ground floor on the left, um, if you uh, trigger the door to open on the guard's first time coming back towards you, yeah. um, then. Uh, this is going to be super smooth. Oh no, it's not. I don't have any power. <laughs> that might just start this mission again. It's timed so that um, the guy on the second floor will trigger the motion yep. detector at the exact moment that you and the other guard are both above the door. So that yeah, if you're if you're a bit lower down, then you get knocked out by the door there. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that was an accident, but I kept it. Right. This is gonna be brilliant. Watch this. It's quite risky. Yes, it but is quite not... risky. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> no one's at that socket. That was yeah. Okay. No one saw that. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Need that to be open. Oh no. <laughs> oh, you see what I'm trying to do, Tom? Yeah. People watching this video might not know what I'm trying to do, and that's perfectly reasonable. That's safer. Right, okay. I'm going to save off this guy. Rewire his gun to that. Oh, that's okay. Ooh. Oh, no! Okay. <laughs> Mi just misjudged the angle. You could load this. again. Yeah, I could do. That's one way of doing that. <laughs> Point gun. You returned yeah. the gate crashes, did you? I did, yeah. Uh, I picked up all of the stealthier, you know, more subtle um, ways of eliminating people, as opposed to the uh, kicking down doors and shooting people thing that this game sort of supports, but isn't. <laughs> yes. Oh, no, no, oh. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly different. Master of stealth. <laughs> I really like the ceiling shimmying animation. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly the emotional response that moment should have. <laughs> 
to open that door for it's, me. So obviously the AI is pretty stupid. They, like they don't, hmm. they have no code that lets them understand what a crosslink is. Like they yeah. don't know a crosslink is possible. So when something gets rewired, they notice that a light switch doesn't work, but they don't know. They can't. They don't it, assume that like that's what would have happened. Yeah. Even if they see the light switch open a door, they don't connect the two in their minds. They can't tell that. Oh, that that must mean this hmm. light switch was connected to that door, so I shouldn't press it when my friend is standing there or anything. Right. Um, because a that would be very difficult, <laughs> and B, uh, I kind of like them being stupid. I kind of like, like the pleasure of it really is tricking them and making them do things without meaning to. And if, yeah. you, if I spend ages trying to make them smart, make them understand. <laughs> it's, it's <all> that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you say, I mean, you have to understand. Stupid is relative, um, deeply, deeply relative. Yeah. Um, but okay. And I think in some ways, like smart AI is maybe overrated. I think fun AI is more important. Yeah. Well, I mean, especially if it's. I mean, it's not a. Not exactly an empowerment fantasy, but it's certainly a kind of... I want you know, to feel like you're the kind of mastermind and that they are the pawns in your plan if, mm. you, play well, if you play well. Yeah, or if you're not um, winging it this desperately. Yeah, right. Oh. But that, that does lead to cool situations where um, if a guard presses a light switch, um, he actually <laughs> uh, he pays attention to whether the lights come back on or not. He doesn't yeah. know what light switch is wired to. So it means if the light switch is disconnected, uh, so it won't work, mm. but you turn the lights on manually by some other method when he presses it, he will think that the light switch is still working and just go on about his business. Right. Because he, That's cool. he only pays attention to what he did and what the result of it was, so he understands cause and effect. Mm. <laughs> you can Sorry. use... Um, I don't know if you're planning the thing I usually do here. You might be. I'm trying to get him to turn the other way. But yeah, so the, the elevator will make him do that, but... Yeah, so what I usually do is I have the elevator, when it arrives, linked to the hand scanner. The hand scanner takes like half a second to activate, and the hand scanner opens the door. Okay. That means that he looks around like a half second before the door opens. Yeah, it's just so a, a less smooth way of doing that, but... Yeah, a lot of the most kind of uh, interesting things to do in Gunpoint are by no means required, and they're more about finesse, it's all about... Yeah, like, definitely. Uh, can you think of a cool way to do this beyond just... <laughs> But that's kind of, I mean, that's ultimately the kind of the key to, to Deus Ex and Thief and, and Dishonored more recently, is it's not completing the mission. It's kind of interesting watching the sort of, I mean, I think you'd say, having read all your own reviews, that the thing that's come up in all of them is the length of the game, right? Which, you know, but like Dishonored got that as well, right? That you can complete Dishonored in three hours <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember if that, you remember. play it as a shooter. <laughs> but again, like, I've played 60 hours of Dishonored, um, presumably more successfully than I'm currently playing this, but... Yeah, I mean, when you came on, when you settled on 20 missions, was that a concern to you at all? Or was it just like, this is what I know I can do well? Um, it was partly the plot. So originally I, I kind of thought, uh, okay, I'll make the plot. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll make the plot. Shut your phone off. <laughs> um, uh, I'll make the plot just 20 missions um, because, to be honest, it's, like, it's quite hard to write a plot that takes you more than that. Yeah, like, yeah. You have to just, uh, as you probably noticed in a lot of video game plots, there's just a lot of oh, you're trying to get to here, but then there's this long detour you have to take because of this reason, because we just need the game to be longer. Mm. Uh, so I didn't want to do that. I wanted to make sure that, like, once I had an idea for a plot, it didn't seem to naturally require any more than that. And then I thought, okay, if I have time to make more missions, then I will... Um... <laughs> if he turns around, I think he's going to shoot you right away. Oh, oh well done. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Oh, damn it. Um, so I thought I would do, like, in, like... Um sort of one-off, non-story related extra missions if I had time. Yeah. But then making 20 missions would have turned out to be incredibly grueling. <laughs> I can imagine. As I said, you know, I made like at least 10 that I just never used because they weren't good enough. And it takes a lot of, it just takes time to even find that out. You have to do rounds of testing and uh, see what people understand and what they don't understand. And to be honest, more of the time it was just surprising what people liked and what people didn't like. Mm. Um, and also I'm just not particularly good at level design. <laughs> like. I have sometimes I have ideas I'm really excited about, but I don't have like more than twenty ideas I'm really excited about. So uh, if I was making more levels, it would be kind of scraping the barrel. It would be like trying to think up some new way of arranging these elements that mm. uh, wasn't already done to death. Yeah, I, want, I didn't really want to do that. So um, in terms of like um, player created levels, you obviously packed in a level editor that you didn't announce until you knew you were going to do it. Yeah. Was there any kind of any doubt that, that was where it was going to go, or were you kind of? pretty convinced that you were going to... I originally thought I was going to do it after release um, and then I thought if I want to tell people I'm going to do it after release then I need to know that I can do it. So I did like a uh, I thought let's just try it you know I think in my head I can imagine a way it could work but I don't know if it would really work um, 
and so I tried to make a prototype of it, and then once I'd done that, I'm like, this is nearly done. <laughs> like, this, there's lots of bugs with it, and there's lots of things to tinker with, but I could just finish it now. And so I spent yeah. like, I think it was four more days on it, and uh, just finished it off. And so yeah, it's in there. It's, oh, it's quite limited. There's, um, there's certain like, I don't think you can make an index level in it. So this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he didn't stop because he couldn't see you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, holding people like gunpoint doesn't really make any sense if they can't see that you're holding a gun. Yeah, fair enough. I suppose maybe you should have seen the laser pointer, but... Well... That could be like an infrared thing that only you can see. Indeed. Excellent bridging that ludo narrative. <laughs> using the next one. So, yeah, like so level editor was one of the most requested things uh, mm -hmm. before I put one in, and now that one's in there, it's still one of the most requested things because people just assume it's not in there. <laughs> they say, hey, add a level like, editor. We, I mean, are you considering doing anything with, by way of like a community site or something for people yeah, to share on? Yeah, it's tricky because uh, the plan has always been to use Steamworks, uh, sorry, Steam Workshop, um, yeah, yeah. to share levels and to um, you know have a central repository for them and let people break them and play them, and that'd be brilliant. Mm. But it requires a bit of uh, integration that I can't do myself. Um, like you can't do that just within Game Maker. You need to plug in, and there isn't one at the moment um, that I know of. So I can pay someone to make one for me, but we're also going to convert it to the latest version of Game Maker so that it'd be compatible with Mac and Linux. Right. And that's a big job. Yeah, I can imagine. And it would mean the plugin for doing it, Steam Workshop in the old version, would no longer apply, and we'd have to make a new plugin. So it's a question of which one we should do first. Like, yeah. How important is it to have it now versus okay. later? Cool. I think we can wrap it up there. We've seen a lot of gunpoint. And cool. um, yeah, congratulations, Tom. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> On, uh, yeah, you know, games journalist to games developer. How does that feel? Transmogrification. Yeah, exactly. Your, uh, your, your pupation is complete. <laughs> the grotesque chrysalis of games journalist sheds, slows away, and reveals indie butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> it feels good, man. Yeah. <laughs> Basking in the sun. All right. Uh, cheers. All right. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much. Bye.